Good afternoon everyone, this is my 2001 Y61 Nissan Patrol with a difference. I uh, put a different engine in there and I think you're going to like it. Let me show you. This is a 1998 Mercedes OM606 six-cylinder turbo diesel. They originally make 177 horsepower, this thing's pushing over 400 and it spins the four tires on this like you wouldn't believe. It is awesome. And it sounds like a, like a Supra on steroids. It sounds absolutely insane. It's got our billet inlet, it's got our stainless cast exhaust, it's got billet turbo on it, and just a whole host of parts that we make for these cars. And I cannot wait to show you how exciting this thing is. Stay tuned, you're gonna love this. Do you dare me? To do what? To pull it the go fast lever. Are you ready? Oh, <laughs> oh 5.9, yes! <laughs> I knew I could get that point one. Oh, that, that is sweet. Yeah, I'm a happy guy. That's a stick shift as well. Manual, that is, ah, uh, yes. That is a big vehicle going fast. It took about, what, 5,000 miles off its whole life <laughs> yeah. doing that. It wheel spun a lot in first. Yes, it did. A lot. And All four wheels. That's, yes, the lead seat, the lead sound. Right, let's cover the most important thing that you need to know about a Y61 Patrol. Y61 Patrols are known for having the strongest axles that you can get in any kind of 4x4 SUV type vehicle. And that's why a lot of people use them for this crazy sand dune racing with like 2000 horsepower and all the rest of it. The axles that are in these things are absolutely awesome. So that's great for us because as you know, with the 606 engines that we build, they do tend to break everything that you connect to them. So the patrols are really nice contender for being able to harness that power. And the, it's not just the axles, the axles, the transfer case, and uh, even the gearbox, the five-speed transmission and manual transmission that comes in these cars are really, really strong. They aren't the fastest shifting thing in the world, admittedly, but they are super strong, and that's a great reason to keep them. So, I mean, you can have a look at this, you can see the axles. They are pretty big. I mean, if you're used to looking at like a Land Rover axle or something like that, they are a bit of a whopper. Um, what we've done is obviously we've put a, a lift kit. This has got an old, old man emu lift kit on it. Um, so it's given us a 50 mil lift. Um, nothing else has been drastically changed. It still drives like it should. Um, obviously, <laughs> obviously you can tell from this vehicle, this is certainly not a pavement princess. This has been abused for years. Corrosion is an issue and has been an issue with this car, but I'm working through it piece by piece. I don't want it to be a concourse vehicle, but I've protected all the back end and all the rest of it. It's got a nice layer of paint. But I mean, you can see the axle articulation in this thing. These things off-road are just absolutely mental. I mean, if you look at the back axle, the prop shaft size and generally all that kind of stuff, it is an absolute whopper. Yeah, it's great. And the nice thing, is all the shafts and joints are uh, greasable, fully greasable. So you can get under there with a grease gun uh, and service and maintain them, which is like really quite a big deal. Most modern cars, you can't grease them up, the joints wear out and then they're knackered. So yeah, this is one of the main reasons you want to buy a Y61 Patrol. Let's have a look at the interior and the rest of the car. Right, so I want to give you a little walk around and show you what one of these Nissan Patrols is all about. But before I do, I just want to, well, I just want to express my gratitude to um, Ricardo from RG Power in Portugal, because he, whenever I needed a wiring diagram or anything like that, he's been really, really helpful. An absolutely amazing guy, Portuguese, can't thank him enough. Very, very nice guy, thank you for all your help. Um, and also, um, if you like the Skid Factory, like we do, then you might have also got some inspiration from a car like this, like I did. So thanks for you guys as well. I know that obviously you didn't directly do anything, but for making that cool patrol, it kind of inspired me to do my own. 
Right, let's have a bit of a talk about the car. I'll explain why I got it, how long I've had it. So this is a Y61 Patrol. Um, it's a 2001 model. Um, it's kind of, I won't call it the ugly duckling, but it's not as cool as the previous Y60 model. And it's quite an early model, as you can see, the front grille is kind of a little bit like a Nissan Navara. It's got a very um, sort of, all this is very straight. Whereas on the later models that change, you can see that. And this originally had installed uh, something called a ZD30. Now, if you Google ZD30, the ZD30 engine, it's a four cylinder, three liter. It's known as a grenade. The Australians call it that. It genuinely is quite a poor engine. Now, I tried to defend it. I tried to defend it because obviously I was daily driving this car for a while. And I tried to tell everyone, I said, look, it'll be fine. I'm looking after it, oil changing it, blah, 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 blah. It'll probably last. I'm not tuning it. Well, it didn't last, sadly. Um, it left me and my family pretty much stranded on the, on the M1, <laughs> trying to pick up a car 200 miles away. And it turned into like an eight hour recovery home, which was an absolute nightmare. So the ZD30 sadly had to go, hence why I installed the 606. Now, before I start explaining about the 606 that's in this, I wanna just go around the car and show you some details and some features of the car, because they are quite interesting cars. So these wheels that are on this car are the original wheels that are from um, a Nissan Patrol, a Y61. They were originally silver and I've had them repowder coated in this gold just to try and make them seem more interesting. These uh, Toyo Open Country tires are 35 inch. Um, I think they are 315-7516. So they're directly on the stock wheel. There's no wheel spacer whatsoever on that. That's totally just bolted as it would normally be. And I ran those tires, this combination on the stock suspension for quite a long time you can literally fit a 35 inch tire straight onto a Nissan Patrol Y61 without any mods. Um, the full lock, you'll get a tiny bit of rubbing, but that's it, you know, they're generally quite usable. And it also helps with the gear ratios because they are quite revvy as standard. So that's one really impressive thing. There's not many four by fours, I think apart from perhaps a Jeep Wrangler that you can put a 35 inch tire on standard, um, but this you can. So that's one interesting thing about it. Uh, this has obviously now had a lift kit, but we'll go over that later. Um, so the, another thing about them is obviously they're the quite a comfortable, quite a luxurious vehicle. My example is pretty tired. It, it is a, a, a kind of a, an abused example. So don't consider this a concourse model by any means. Um, basically, I think mine's got 100 and it had 135,000 miles on it. They have leather, it has seated seats, it's got sunroof, uh, very, very com comfortable. One of the really nice features with them, um, they have a power assisted clutch. So the clutch is super light. So even with our like absolutely tremendous clutch kit that we put in these that are super strong, that'll handle like 600 horsepower over a thousand pounds foot of torque, the, 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 the clutch is like feather light. It's absolutely amazing. Um, they have obviously all the usual amenities that slightly more modern 4x4s have, like cup holders and all the other comforts and things like that. And one of the things that I really like about it, which is kind of a cheeky feature, is that, uh, excuse the dirt and the general rust, but they have reclining rear seats. So if you're a passenger in the back, you're on long journeys, um, this rear seat actually reclines back so you can sleep with the armrest obviously goes up. And I think that is, that is really cool. I mean, you, do you get that in a Range Rover? I don't think you get that kind of recline in a Range Rover. But um, I know I'm, I'm obviously not comparing this to a Range Rover, the luxury, but just the fact that it has it, I think is super cool. So um, another good thing about these Y61 patrols is they are big, like really big. And most of them from the factory have a seven seat option. So this one did, but the seven seats, the, the sixth and seventh seat have been thrown away um, and but you can see obviously the seat belts and everything are still there. They'd normally be two seats that faced forward. Uh, I generally have Newton, you know, my Newfoundland, a big dog in the back of here. So um, it's not really ever going to be able to keep the seats in there. Um, but it's a really big boot space. You know, if you want to put an engine block in there or whatever you want to do, whatever you want to use it for, it's like a really good workhorse. And that is one of the reasons I started using this thing on a daily basis. 
Right, so now we're bolted onto the dyno. This might actually seem like a Quentin Tarantino film because we're going backwards and forwards quite a lot in this video, but there's rhyme to my reason. Basically, I didn't want to do burnouts for you and blow it up and then not be able to dyno it. <laughs> of course, that won't happen. Anyway, so what we're going to do now is I've been quick road test with it. It's a bit smoky. There's absolutely no need for that smoke. We can dial that out. Uh, and still get some nice horsepower. So I'm going to do that now, which is just a simple adjustment on the Alda. And also on the dyno, we're going to see with the fuel input pressure gauge, we're going to be able to see um, exactly what fuel pressure we're making on load. So we're going to make sure that doesn't drop to zero. Um, yeah, so first run, it's going to be smoky. Second, like Then I'm going to tweak it down. Second run, we're going to compare it. Right, let's do it. Right, so you've just seen from the first dyno run, it's a bit too smoky. So I'm going to turn the, the maximum fueling down. There's no need for that kind of smoke. And to do that, you can see here, all we're doing is we're just going to crack these two little 10 mil nuts. And uh, I'm going to wind them nuts forward. And then I'm going to wind that whole Allen key back. And that's going to greatly reduce the maximum fuel. Now, because this is such a large CC injector pump, I'm gonna take them nearly all the way to the stopper because I don't really think uh, this setup needs anywhere near that much fuel. It's nice to have the big pump for the efficiency, but we don't need its full capability. Right then, let's do, I've done all my little settings and adjustments. We're gonna do a run and see what this thing makes. Engine horsepower and torque number, because you're gonna absolutely love that. And we're gonna see how much loss we're actually getting through them big 35 inch tires, because that's something on everybody's mind. So we made 318 horsepower at the wheel. We made 525 horsepower at the crankshaft. 40% um, power loss 
is quite normal when you're dealing with full-blown mud tyres, 35 inch on a 4x4 vehicle, that is really normal. On a uh, 124 with road tyres, we might normally see a 25% loss. So uh, G-Wagons and stuff like that, we've seen a bit more on G-Wagons actually, but 40% on this seems about normal. Um, it's quite funny because you read that 318 at the wheel, if you took anybody out in this car, they'd think, this is not a 318 horsepower car. Hopefully we'll be able to show that with a 0 60 times. Um, but yeah, so that gives you a more accurate, that's what's happening at the crankshaft. Um, now, uh, I think many years ago, Goran tested out one of my turbo kits, one of these turbo kits on an engine dyno um, with just the old fashioned manifold adapter and a cast manifold. And that made 495 at the crank. This is obviously our new stainless twin scroll cast manifold that's got all the tuned runner sizes and everything billet inlet, charge cooler. So even though it's got a smaller turbo housing, it does make sense to squeeze a little bit more. So I'm really happy with that result and it feels every bit of that on the road. It feels savage. Right, so an interesting one for you. Obviously I've shrouded the air filter to stop heat getting to it, but I haven't yet put the duct in the bonnet. So I'm interested. I'm gonna close this bonnet so that it's sealed and I want to see with that hot air will it still make as much power it's totally the wrong thing to do you don't want to be making power with hot air but I'm intrigued and it's on the dyno so let's do it Right, so over 500 horsepower at the crankshaft does explain why this thing feels like such an animal on the road. Um, but, wow, I mean, look at that loss, 40% through them big off-road tyres and through that transmission. Obviously, you're going through a transfer case, U-joints, big old axles that's however many years old, rusty old brakes, and it does make a big difference. So, interesting. And we just proved how important it is to have a cold air feed. So... Obviously, what I just did there is I did two dyno runs back to back. I have shrouded this air filter so that it doesn't get the heat from the engine. Um, and obviously, it protects some heat from the battery area. But it still doesn't have a dedicated cold air feed to it because I haven't finished it yet. Uh, I had two options. I was either going to go to there in a big air box or something, but I don't really want a pipe across the front of the engine. I think it's a bit bodgy. Um, or I could go vent in there, but obviously it's not great for off-road, so I haven't quite decided yet. Um, but we did a back-to-back -back, uh, with obviously the bonnet closed and the bonnet open, and look at what we got. So we got, obviously the, the run with the bonnet open, we made 525 horsepower at the engine, and with the bonnet closed, 513, which made us lose two pounds foot of torque. Yeah, you might not notice it, but it's extra pain, it's extra, it's free power, isn't it? You know, like as Gail Banks always says, it's free power, so why not use it? And if you can force some air in, like, you know, also Gail Banks correctly always says, if you can force some of that air in going at speed, you're going to gain even more from that. And why not take advantage of that? Which I will do as soon as I've decided where I'm going to put it. I might delete the washer bottle because that would be a nice entry straight into that area. Yes, yeah, well, yeah, and um, yeah, and just put some sibbies across the bonnet. <laughs> so, and also another thing that I'm really impressed with is this charge cooler. Like, I've been thrashing this thing on the dyno, and that thing stays cold. The inlet air in intake manifold stays cool as well. I really, really like that charge cooler system. So, right, the dyno bit's done. Let's go take it out and have some fun with it and show you what this thing's all about.
If you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it, well, you want to stick around for part two because on part two, we're going to show you the components that we used from the cast stainless steel twin scroll manifold, the billet inlet manifold, the bolt on engine mounts, everything that makes this dead easy to bolt in that we sell. Stick around, you're going to enjoy it.